Okay, the next item of business is portfolio questions. The portfolio this afternoon is education and skills. As ever, if our member wishes to ask a supplementary, you can ask that they uh, press the request to speak button or press an R in the chat functions during the relevant question. The usual plea for brevity in both questions and answers to get through uh, as many as possible. Uh, question number one from Alex Rowley has been withdrawn. Question number two, Maggie Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what communication it has had with Scottish universities and UCU Scotland about the four fights and USS pensions disputes in light of the recent reballoting for industrial action by staff. Minister Jamie Hepburn. I have met on a regular basis with university leaders and trade unions, including UCU Scotland, to discuss the ongoing disputes regarding pay, working conditions and pensions. Although universities are autonomous bodies and such have responsibility for their own decisions regarding pay, working conditions and, and pensions, I will continue to urge both sides to continue to engage in constructive and meaningful dialogue to resolve this dispute and underlying issues without the need for further industrial action. Thank you, Chairman. I thank the Minister for that response. He will be aware of the deep dissatisfaction of staff and students across higher education at the moment. In addition to the UCU reballoting, Dundee University's unison workers are out on strike as we speak. Does he agree that university principals need to account for the nearly £80 million of public money, Scottish public money, they are planning to use to meet a deficit in the USS, even though the scheme itself has stated this deficit no longer exists? as it was a result of COVID? And could Scottish ministers offer to work with Scottish principals to make the case that a revaluation of USS and reduction in the £80 million contribution is necessary? Minister. It, well, ha having mentioned the, the Dundee situation, let me also make clear that on that specific issue of engaged with the, the university and unions uh, to discuss that particular uh, situation. In respect of the wider issues around the a university superannuation scheme. Of course, I think we should remind ourselves it's not a Scottish-specific scheme, it's a UK-wide scheme, uh, and it's not a, a government-funded uh, pension scheme. So, again, it doesn't fall within the, the scope of the devolved responsibility of its uh, Scottish Minister. So, I certainly wouldn't be able to determine that there should be a revaluation. But, as I've indicated before, I'll continue to engage with university leaders and uh, unions to discuss these matters and continue uh, to press them to resolve uh, these matters without the uh, need for uh, recourse to further industrial dispute. Please supplementary, Mercedes Vialba. Thank you. And can I remind members of my register of interest? A survey by UCU Trade Union of University staff highlighted that up to two-thirds are seriously thinking about leaving the sector over the next five years. Their pay has fallen by 25% in real terms over the past decade, and changes to USS pensions are set to leave staff up to £240,000 worse off. The Minister must recognise the harm being done to university staff by year-on-year -year real terms pay cuts and cuts to pensions. So can he share with us what action is the Scottish Government taking to encourage university principals to seriously address staff concerns? Minister. Well, as I've laid out uh, a number of times uh, uh, now, this is a matter in which I continue to uh, engage in dialogue with both unions and uh, university management uh, around. These are issues that I uh, actively uh, discuss uh, with them. Uh, that uh, will, of course, be one of them. Uh, when push comes to shove, though, I cannot resolve this dispute. It is for the university management, it is for unions to come together to discuss these matters, and I uh, would urge them to do so in the along the lines of the uh, Fair Work uh, framework that we uh, operate to, uh, ensuring that there is proper, meaningful dialogue, that workers' voices are listened to, and ultimately, I hope they can resolve the matter together. For the brief supplementary, Michael Mara. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister talks the language of dialogue and discourse, but does he not recognise that 13 years of flat cash, no increase in the unit of resource going to universities, is leading to these challenges and creating the conflict between the management and workers and the tough decisions that are being made. If it's going to be resolved, the government has to make sure they resource it properly. Minister. Well, we are resourcing higher education properly. We will once again provide over £1 billion of public expenditure to uh, our universities this year to support their continued financial sustainability. I would have thought that would be recognised as a fairly substantial investment and indeed in recognition of some of the challenges that we've seen over the pandemic period we've invested more for 190 million pounds in direct additional funding to support universities in the difficult uh, circumstances so we are stepping up to the mark we're investing in higher education we'll continue to do so 
Question number three, Miles Briggs. Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what support it is providing to help young people at risk from exclusion from mainstream education. Cabinet Secretary. Our publication included Engaged and Involved Part 2, Preventing and Managing School Exclusions, provides national guidance on school exclusion. This makes clear that exclusion from school should only be the last resort used in the context of prevention, early intervention and support for positive relationships, learning and behaviour. It should be a proportionate response where there is no appropriate alternative and must be for as short a period as possible with the aim of improving outcomes for the child or young person. The guidance also sets out schools and education authorities' responsibilities in line with their powers to make decisions to exclude. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Often these situations are complicated and complex, and, and we need to make sure that appropriate support is in place for vulnerable and disadvantaged children. Scottish Conservatives support the establishment of family hubs to help to bring together health, education and social care services. Um, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she would agree to a pilot project in Scotland to see how that can be developed and rolled out across the country? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we do, of course, have um, uh, substantial amounts of policy, um, both within education and health, working uh, together uh, to help some of the most vulnerable in society. And one of the aspects around this is the whole Family Wellbeing Fund, uh, which is uh, being funded uh, for the financial year and for the rest of the parliamentary term as we seek to establish uh, full support for um, all families uh, for a range of issues, not just surrounding uh, exclusion. I would, of course, uh, in the, 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 the spirit uh, which I think that uh, Miles Briggs um, um, asked me that question, be very happy to hear more about the, the, the um, scheme that they have in question. I have pointed out some of the plans we have already in place, but uh, more than happy to always hear uh, about another party's alternatives, uh, should you wish to provide me with further details. Thank you. Supplementary, Martin Whitt. I am very grateful, Deputy Presiding Officer. The percentage of excluded pupils with additional support needs is sadly increasing, but the percentage of children who are identified with ASN needs in schools is rising astronomically. So, Given we now have 600, f 600 fewer specialist teachers for children and young people with ASN qualifications since 2012, what is the Scottish Government doing to encourage not only more teachers into the profession, teachers to stay in the profession? but specifically those who want to specialise in ASN, which will keep these children in our mainstream education. Cabinet Secretary. It will, of course, uh, all teachers uh, provide um, um, teaching and support to those with additional support needs. I am um, sure the member will be well aware of the uh, Butte House agreement that we have with the Scottish Greens, where we have agreed to work together to ensure uh, that we are looking at the um, um, professional work that we can do to ensure that there are further teachers uh, that are there to support additional support needs um, and their career progression. I uh, would be happy for the member, of course, um, to provide um, any uh, positive uh, enforcement to those policies that we have for the Scottish Greens and to hear any more suggestions uh, about how we can further improve on this issue. Question number four, Carol Mochan. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on what plans it has to offer home fee status to Ukrainian refugees in Scotland or those displaced following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Minister. On Thursday, 14th of April, I announced that displaced Ukrainian nationals setting in Scotland who have submitted an application to Homes for Ukraine, Ukraine Family, the Ukraine Extension Schemes will be eligible for home fee status and living cost support from the 2022-23 academic year. Carol Thank you. Uh, that news is most welcome. Can I ask the uh, Cabinet Secretary to confirm whether this will include the considerable number of other nationals who have been displaced by the conflict in Ukraine? Minister. Uh, it will cover all the nationals that I have uh, laid out. I have to concede I was not quite following the precise nature of the question there. I think that they are encompassed within my initial answer. If there is a cohort that uh, the member wants to specifically write to me about, I will be happy to, to pick that up and come back to them in writing. Supplementary, Jenny Minto. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Minister what support the Scottish Government is providing to international students studying in Scotland who find themselves in financial hardship. Not directly related to the conflict in Ukraine, but Minister. Uh, well, it is uh, directly related to the conflict in Ukraine, Presiding Officer, and the, and the 14th of uh, April, we also announced the newly created £1 million international Students' Emergency Fund, who will support Ukrainian uh, nationals who are already uh, studying here, amongst uh, other international students who face financial uh, hardship as a result of significant change 
in uh, their circumstances, eligible students will be able to apply for immediate financial assistance through their college or university. Thank you, Minister. Question number five, Jamie Hawker Johnson. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking in response to the findings of the HM Inspector of Education Review of Foundation Apprenticeship Provision. Minister. Since their launch in 2016, over 11,000 pupils have taken up the opportunity of a foundation apprenticeship. Given the significant growth of foundation apprenticeships and to ensure the continued best outcomes for young people, in 2020, the Scottish Government commissioned Her Majesty's Inspector of Education to undertake a review of the, the delivery of FA programmes. We acknowledge the review findings and use them as the basis to drive improvement. We have established a stakeholder group which will support this engagement and will set out further steps following this process. Jimmy Hogg, uh, I thank the Minister for that answer. I am on record as an enthusiast for foundation apprenticeships, but the HMIE review must give us all calls for concern. The review noticed real weaknesses in being able to access foundation apprenticeships across Scotland schools, about the promotion of them to young learners and about the confusion amongst schools and providers on how the frameworks operate. The review acknowledged that in many schools withdrawal rates are very high, ranging from 50 per cent and 100 per cent of young people leaving their programme early. Now, I recognise the issues caused by the pandemic, but the Minister must acknowledge that these are serious, there are serious alarm bells being rung over this policy, many of which predate COVID. Foundation apprentices have the potential to make a real difference. So what will the Minister do to ensure that these opportunities are not squandered by the lack of support from government? Minister. Well, on that last point, let me say there is no lack of support from the government for foundation uh, apprenticeships, and I would make the point, as, uh, or make the point again, that we had, uh, we've now had over 11,000 uh, young people undertake a uh, foundation uh, apprenticeship, and indeed, from cohort one, when there was 346 uh, starting on uh, a foundation apprenticeship, we had 4,240 by cohort five as a result of the Scottish government's support. Uh, let me be clear, though, and I recognise there are issues identified inherent within that report. That is a report we commissioned so that we could hear what the issues might be. We are committed to listening to those issues, uh, learning from them and implementing a programme of improvement in line with our continued commitment to not only the concept of a foundation apprenticeship, but the delivery of a foundation apprenticeship as a life-changing opportunity for our young people. Supplementary, Bob Doris. Uh, thank you, President Officer. We can't just say foundation apprenticeships are a good thing. We have to be clear on why they're a good thing. Minister, foundation apprenticeships can provide young people with a head start on a career by providing qualifications and experience, something employers are looking for. Can the Minister commit to ensuring foundation apprenticeships remain a vital and a central part, Minister, to our skills and training system? Minister. I, I can absolutely guarantee that, and again, to emphasise our uh, support, we are uh, committed to responding to the report to drive further improvement, but we are also committed to continuing uh, foundation apprenticeship delivery for this uh, coming year, for 2022-2023. Uh, 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 so we will continue uh, to deliver, we will continue to learn, and we will make sure that young people get that uh, meaningful uh, experience that can do precisely what Bob Doris is referring to, to get them readier for the world of work. Question number six, Russell Finlay. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is on whether the school curriculum should be free from party political bias. Cabinet Secretary. It is important that our pupils understand the democratic process in Scotland, the UK and further afield. Learning and teaching should be conducted in a non-partisan and non-party political basis. Individual schools develop their own curriculum at individual school level. Scottish ministers have no direct control or influence on individual schools' curricula. Russell Finn. Uh, thank you for the answer. Um, Scottish Government Agency Education Scotland tells school children the Loch Ness Monster can help them form a view on the independence referendum. One education camp campaigner describes this as nationalist propaganda and an attempt to brainwash pupils into thinking of Scotland as a victim of a wicked conspiracy. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that the SNP's exploitation of our beloved Nessie is wrong and commit to the removal of such embarrassing and ridiculous propaganda from the curriculum? Cabinet Secretary. The, the um, actual resource in question was, of course, developed by two primary school teachers in conjunction with Professor David Martin-Jones at the University of Glasgow. Professor Martin-Jones is a very well respected in his academic area, and this material was based on his research. I would make very clear 
that this resource, which was not developed in-house by Education Scotland and certainly not by the Scottish Government, is part of a resource that is there eh, for teachers. There is no fixed cur national curriculum in Scotland. We have no direct control or influence over the curriculum. I trust our teachers to deliver that curriculum. It's a shame the Scottish Conservatives do not. A couple of supplementaries. First, Cocab Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, teachers across Scotland do a fantastic job educating our children about political literacy in an impartial and responsible manner. Will the Cabinet Secretary recommit to empowering our teachers through the Curriculum for Excellence, which the Tories want to tear up, to allow them to equip our young people with the knowledge, skills and understanding they need to succeed in life? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Cocab Stewart is quite right, and as I um, alluded to in my original answer, we absolutely remain fully committed to the empowerment of our school leaders, staff, parents and pupils, including on decision affecting learning and teaching. It is absolutely correct that we should empower our school leaders and our teachers. They know their children um, best, and it is quite right that the Scottish Government and our agencies provide them with the support and resources to allow them to do that. Thank you. And Faisal Chowdhury. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Would the Scottish Government agree with me that the school curriculum should contain education on racism and colonialism, and that such reforms are not party political but sensible reflective measure on our common history? Well, I think the member raises an exceptionally important um, point, and I hope this is something that we uh, do absolutely agree on. Uh, there is a great deal of work um, ongoing on race equality education um, and a lot of work being done by the Race Equality and Anti-Racism in Education um, programme, which I'm sure the member is aware of. This is something which the government is uh, committed uh, to looking at very seriously, which we're committed to empowering our stakeholders uh, to take very seriously and then to take action um, on that. And I look forward to the work uh, that those stakeholders are taking forward as part of the RERI programme, because, as I said at the start, it's a very important point that we do need to tackle across this chamber. Thank you. Question number seven, Richard Leonard. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the joint letter reportedly signed by 111 University of Edinburgh academics expressing deep concern about the future of higher education in Scotland. Minister. I have received a copy of the letter the member refers to, and I have responded as I have laid out in answer to other questions I meet on a regular basis with university leaders and trade union leaders uh, across recent months to discuss many of the matters raised in this uh, letter. Uh, although universities are autonomous bodies, central to our fair work approach is the expectation that employers, workers and trade unions should work together to reach the right decisions and ensure workers are treated fairly. Richard Leonard. Uh, well, can I thank the Minister for his reply? This letter, signed by over 100 academics, is damning. Let me quote it. Staff morale is lower than ever eroded by job insecurity, gendered and racial disparities in pay, unsustainable workloads. Meanwhile, university leaders fixate on driving through massive, unjustified pension cuts. I raised the UCU pay and pension dispute with the Minister last month, who told Parliament then, and let me quote him, meaningful dialogue should take place on the basis and according to the principles of our fair work approach. Does he have any shred of evidence that this is what's happened? What is he doing to resolve this long-running dispute in higher education, which just this week has been joined by a new dispute in further education? He is the Minister for Higher and Further Education. When is he going to act? Minister. Well, I can assure the member I act uh, day in, day out, to try and make sure that uh, uh, those who work in our university and college environments have the best experience, best possible experience of the world of work, and indeed our students have the best possible experience of higher and further education. I am afraid to say, though, there is no escaping that there is no direct role for the Scottish Government in resolving these matters. Now, what I will do, what I am committed to doing, what I have laid out in previous answers to Mr Leonard and various answers today, is to continue to engage with all parties to ensure that they uh, speak with one another in a culture of mutual respect to try and resolve these matters amicably. That is what I want to see, and I'm sure that's what Mr Leonard wants to see as well. A couple of supplementaries. First, Jackson Carlow, who joins us remotely. Oh, he's question eight, sorry. Uh, supplementary, uh, Michael Mara. Uh, 
Thank you, President Officer. I mean, anybody working in the college or, or university sector across Scotland will be dismayed at the standard of answer that is coming from the Minister today to various questions about the situation faced by our colleges and universities across Scotland, the real tough conditions and worsening conditions our staff are working under. What does he have to say about the fact that research capture funding has declined but from a 10 per cent lead across the rest of the UK to parity now in the last eight years, and that the funding that he has put forward, and he talked about the great funding package that he believes he has put forward for our universities, that is an active role and a decision made by him and his government colleagues. They have frozen the unit of resource for 13 years in a row. What can he do about that? Minister. Well, I would go back to the point I made earlier against the backdrop, and what I did not mention earlier is that for this financial year, the Scottish Fiscal Commission was very clear that we are operating against the backdrop of a 5.2 per cent cut in real terms to the Scottish Government's budget across the entirety of Scottish Government expenditure. We are maintaining over £1 billion worth of expenditure in uh, our uh, uh, higher education sector. Again, I would have thought that would be something that Michael Mara would welcome. Again, I make the point there is no direct role for the Scottish Government in resolving this dispute in higher education. Universities are, I think everyone agrees, should be autonomous from the Scottish Government. It is my responsibility to engage with all parties to encourage them to resolve this matter. And a brief supplementary, Bob Doris. Uh, Presiding officer, further higher education would always welcome more resources. I can put that on the record. Can I ask the minister whether the Labour Party has at any point identified how much more resource it would give or where the money would come from, or is it just hollow, empty rhetoric in this chamber? Minister. I would leave others to conclude as to what the Labour Party's rhetoric is, but they have not come forward to me with any proactive or positive suggestions. Question number eight, and as previously billed, Jackson Carla, who will surprise nobody to hear, is joining us remotely. <laughs> After a moment of some consternation, uh, but to ask the Scottish Government to provide an update on its progress in increasing the number of permanent teaching roles available. Cabinet Secretary. The recruitment and deployment of teachers, including permanent teaching posts, are a matter for local authorities. We have provided £240 million of additional investment over two financial years and a further £145.5 million of permanent funding from April this year to support the employment of additional teachers and support staff. There are over 2,000 more teachers in Scotland schools than before the start of the pandemic in 2019. Jackson Carlo. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer, but according to the Scottish Government's most recent annual statistical publication for schools, there was an increase in the proportion of temporary teachers at the last count. Now, there are thousands of temporary and supply teachers in Scotland, and many would like nothing more than the guarantee that their job is permanent and secure. However, they are continuously let down by what appears to me to be a fairly ancient and utterly inflexible recruitment system. Uh, several of my constituents are affected by this. They regularly contact me, and the uncertainty and worry this causes them uh, is really quite considerable. The annual battle just to keep their job is completely demoralising, and sadly, and even more worryingly, I know this is contributing to a number of teachers leaving the profession for good. Uh, can the Scottish Government offer a plan that would fundamentally address this process, update it, and in so doing secure the continued availability and commitment of many of these teachers and their futures? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I thank Jackson Carlow for, for that question? I have much sympathy for where uh, he is coming from, but I would point out, as I did in my original answer, that the process that he is talking about is one for each local authority to determine. The role for the Scottish Government is around, of course, resourcing, which, again, as I mentioned, uh, we have provided and baselined £145.5 million uh, to ensure that local authorities have the resources there to turn the temporary um, staff posts into permanent. We were told that one of the issues that was uh, stopping uh, permanent contracts was the fact that some of the funding that came through during COVID was in itself temporary and could not be relied on. Uh, we, have, uh, we have listened, we have actioned uh, to ensure that that has been baselined. I see no reason uh, for there, therefore, to be the number of temporary uh, contracts that we have. Uh, but I would point out to Mr Carlow, unless he is saying that the Scottish Government should take over the process, which is for local government at this point, then we have done what we can within Scottish Government. I am, of course, happy to work with COSLA um, on this issue, but it is a matter for every individual local authority to look at the process involved. A brief supplementary, Stephanie Callaghan. 
President officer, to ask the Cabinet Secretary for an update on the ratio of pupils to teachers in classrooms and how this will benefit pupil wellbeing and attainment. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, the current pupil teacher the current pupil teacher ratio is 13.2, the lowest since 2009. We now have more teachers than at any time since 2008. Having more teachers per pupil will undoubtedly, of course, help to support pupil wellbeing and uh, attainment. And that's one of the reasons why the Scottish Government has, of course, uh, been uh, very, very adamant that one of our top priorities uh, for this parliamentary term is the recruitment um, of uh, further teachers and further support staff. Thanks very much, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes portfolio questions. There will be a brief pause before we move to the next item of business to allow front benches to change.